These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm. Or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you. Okay, well, let's think about this compound. Uh, do you remember what this symbol means? Uh, solid. Yeah, so that means this is in solid form. And now we're going to ask what would happen if we put this in water. Well, if we put this in water, it can dissolve. So let's suppose that this is going to dissolve. Um, but try writing what the products would be if that dissolves. Let's talk about that. Part of that's right, but there's also some mistakes. So let's talk about that piece by piece. You want to have another, another try? Let's yeah. see. Uh, yeah, I think I like your second guess better. Okay, good. Yes, yeah, so let's fix that. Now, do you remember the concept of ionic and covalent bonds? Mm -hmm. Some bonds are ionic and some bonds are covalent. What type of bond is there between the oxygen and the hydrogen? Is the OH bond ionic or covalent? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right, it's covalent. And what type of bond is between the calcium and the OH? It's uh, ionic. Yeah, that, that's right. Um, how did you know that it was a covalent bond between the oxygen and the hydrogen? Because is that like when they're close in the same kind of side of the table, That's right. they, when they're close enough, they have a um, covalent, if they're on opposite sides of the periodic table, then it's uh, ionic bond. That's a good way to put it, yeah, that's a good way to put it. So um, remember that covalent bonding is when you're sharing electrons, yeah. and ionic bonding is when you transfer electrons. Well, when can you transfer electrons? You can transfer electrons if one of the atoms wants the electrons much more than the other. Uh, if one of the atoms wants the electrons much more than the other atom, then it can transfer the electrons. But if, if both of the atoms want electrons, then neither is going to be willing to give up the electrons, and they're forced to share. Well, the O and the H are both non-metals, so they're both from the right side of the periodic table, and they have fairly similar electronegativity. So neither is going to transfer the electrons, they have to share the electrons between them. Actually, actually, hydrogen is from the left of the periodic table, but its electronegativity is not like the other things on the left. It's good to know that hydrogen is actually similar in electronegativity to carbon. Even though hydrogen is on the left side of the periodic table, it's actually similar in electronegativity to carbon. That's why hydrogen is considered a nonmetal. Okay. So this is a nonmetal. So these would be sharing. On the other hand, calcium, uh, I think calcium is from the second column of the okay. periodic table, so it's from the metal side. So it is w willing to give up electrons. Okay, so this would be an ionic bond. Now, now, why does that matter? Well, when you dissolve things, what types of bonds tend to break when something dissolves, and what types of bonds don't tend to break? Well, it turns out that ionic bonds tend to break when you dissolve something in water, and covalent bonds tend to not break. I don't think we'll quite take the time to explain why that is. We'll, we'll just memorize that. Mm -hmm. We'll just say that ionic bonds break when you dissolve something in water, and covalent bonds generally don't. Okay. Uh, and I think that's what you did here, because you wrote the calcium and the OH as two separate units in the water, but you didn't split up the O and the H, so that was good. Now, something else I think that you did, yeah, but you put in the charges. Good. Okay. Oh, now, at first you weren't quite sure what this would be. At first I, thought, I think you thought maybe it would be water, but because the covalent bonds aren't breaking here, this isn't changing. It was an OH over here, so it should still be an OH over here. This couldn't turn into water without forming different covalent bonds. So if it's an OH over here, it should still be an OH over here. The covalent portions don't change. So the point is that when we dissolve something, the covalent part portions don't change. Only the ionic bonds break. So this should still be an OH on the right. Then you did something that was very good, which is you thought about the charges. The charge is the most important part, and I think you figured out the charges correctly. Uh, how did you know this calcium would be a positive 2? Well, I think you just have memorized that hydroxide has a negative 1 oxidation state. 
hydroxide has a negative one oxidation state, um, and there's two hydroxides. So the calcium would have to have positive two. Um, why does the calcium end up positive? Well, remember, this is a metal. It's willing to give up electrons. So what's happened here is that the calcium has completely given up the electrons, and the hydroxide has picked up the electrons. So that's all very good. And it needs to be two. There you go. That's right. OK, that was the last part that you hadn't put in there. That's right. There's two OHs over here. Now, should I write that as a subscript or as a coefficient? Coefficient. Good. That's right. That is one thing that changes here. I, I can't put in a new coefficient. Instead, I, I, can't, I can't put in a new subscript. Instead, I should write that as two hydroxide ions. So that, that is a change that happens in these dissolution reactions. There's one other thing that I think you left out, which is remember that over here we put the state of matter. We said this was in the solid state. So oh, what state of matter should I write here? That's right, AQ. For both of these, I should write AQ for both species. Now, AQ stands for aqueous, but I think a lot of students don't know what that, what that means. Did you know, what does AQ mean? It's dissolved in a water. Precisely, yeah, precisely. So aqueous really means dissolved in water. It doesn't mean that it's become water, obviously. It means that it's dissolved in water. So this is a substance that has dissolved in water. All right, so what's the name of this reaction? OK, so that's how we would write this. So let's see. Um, so what's the name of the forward reaction here? You know that special reactions have special names. Redox. Uh, let's see. I don't think it's a redox because, uh, yeah, it's not really a redox because nobody's oxidation numbers are changing. The calcium had a plus two oxidation number on the right and has a plus two oxidation number on the left. So their redox are not changing. What do we call a reaction that goes from solid form to aqueous form? What do we call a reaction that goes from solid to aqueous? That's called a dissolution reaction. And that's a pretty logical name because what's happening here is that we're dissolving the solid. So this is called a dissolution reaction. because we're dissolving the solid. So when you go from solid to aqueous form, that's dissolution. That's what you said aqueous meant. You, meant, you said it meant dissolved in water. So this is a logical name, a dissolution reaction. So that's the new type of reaction that we'll be dealing with here. In the previous chapter, we were dealing with acid-base reactions, or neutralization reactions, we might call them. But here, we're dealing with dissolution reactions. There's also a name for the reverse reaction here. What do we call it when we go from aqueous phase to solid phase? Uh, can, can. That actually would be this. It's like in a fridge we have that. Um, it's actually a little, actually that's not quite right. So condensation is when you go from gas to liquid phase. Okay. Vaporization is when you go from liquid to gas phase. Freezing is when you go from liquid to solid phase. Melting is when you go from solid to liquid phase. But those are all things that are not part of this chapter. Oh, those are not part of this chapter. I Remember, that we're not going from liquid to solid here. This doesn't mean liquid. It means dissolved. Well, so this is what's called a precipitation reaction. Oh. And that makes sense, right? Because what do we call this solid? We call the solid the precipitate. Mm -hmm. So if we're forming solid, that should be called a precipitation reaction. So this is not like melting or freezing. Because we're not going from pure solid to pure liquid. We're going from solid to dissolved in water. So we shouldn't think of this as being the same type. It's not the same type of reaction as freezing or melting or vaporization. Uh, this is a different chapter of material. So the names of these reactions are dissolution, when you go from solid to dissolved, or precipitation, when something that's dissolved precipitates out. Now, normally, we can write equations in either direction, and it doesn't matter. However, in this chapter, we are always going to write the reactions with the solid on the left and the aqueous on the right. Okay. We're always going to write them with the solid on the left and the aqueous on the right, just because that's the conventional way to do it, and we're going to get confused if we write it any, any other way. Mm -hmm. So even if what we're focusing on is precipitation, even if what we're focusing on is precipitation, we're still going to put the aqueous phase on the right and the solid phase on the left. That might seem a little bit weird because um, you, you would seem like that for precipitation, you would want to write precipitation like this. But even if what we care about is precipitation, we're still going to put the solid on the starting material side and the aqueous on the product. That just turns out to avoid confusion in this chapter. Yeah.